Hi, this is Jen Reynolds again, and I'm here to tell you about my part two top 10 ways to be successful in your seat-based science course. Number one, take advantage of extra credit if your instructor offers it. For my classes, I typically tend to offer extra credit. It might be participation in some sort of a STEM project, um, a book report, a movie report, going to an event that is local in our town that has to do with uh, the preserve, showing an owl and writing about it, or a, a garden walk somebody's offering um, if they participate in one of our NASA link events, such as watching the eclipse and writing about it. If they go visit the Arboretum or the zoo and write about it, then I do tend to give extra credit for these outside learning experiences because this is where you kind of put everything all together when you can see it and, oh yeah, Miss Jen talked about this in my biology class and now I'm seeing this in person at these gardens. You can learn a lot and things can click. So I definitely believe in different types of learning experiences. Number two, watch any linked videos. A lot of times your instructor will put some linked videos if you're in an online course or you have an online um, learning management system component to your seat-based course. These are a lot of times something just to enhance your learning experience. They might be fun facts, it might be some YouTube videos, might be something new in the news, but it's to your benefit and it's to help you be successful in your learning experience. Number three, use the online component. Take advantage of your learning management system and check your agenda and schedule there. Access your calendar. You can typically access any lecture materials after class so that you can go back and rewatch them or see things if you missed class. Sometimes you will be able to submit homework or papers there access beneficial links. So if that is offered to you, then definitely use that and take advantage of it. Number four, make sure that you have the materials that you need. A lot of times I will see students never buy the book for class or never get the materials that they need. And then they are missing out when they need that book to complete assignments or they're not able to read the chapters or they don't have the lab kit or the poster materials that they need to complete something on time. So this is where being organized matters when you're taking a class because a lot of times you may be taking four classes, five classes, working, have a family at the same time, commuting. So make sure that you do whatever you need to do to keep yourself organized. Number five, bring your charger to class. If you are using your laptop or your phone for assignments and things, make sure that you have your charger with you so that when you need those items, they're not dead. Um, number six, I highly encourage, not every class is like this. I will tell you some lab classes are like, you absolutely cannot have food and drink in the classroom. However, I've taken extra learning classes in my past and, um, how the brain learns and learn in the education setting type of classes. So I do like for students to feel free that they can bring drinks and food during class. You are using up a lot of energy and when you are learning um, and drinks and food kind of replenish that blood sugar that's going to your brain while you're learning. So chewing gum, drinks and food if it's allowed, coffee, whatever helps you, I highly recommend that because you are going to feel more relaxed in your class when you feel like you have had something to eat and drink so you don't get dehydrated. And if you need the caffeine to wake up in the morning, um, I totally get that. Number seven, stay in class as much as you can. I realize uh, there are some cases where people are coming to class as much as they can and sometimes they have to leave early to commute to work to go pick up one of their siblings to take them to and from school 
but as much as you can stay through the duration of the class, if at all possible, so that you don't miss out on important information and the learning experience. Number eight, save your notes and save your assignments that are handed back to you. A lot of times I will see students throw things in the garbage right after class and you can use all of those notes to study and to help you in your projects, in your unit exams, in your midterms, in your final exams. I still have all of my materials from when I was in undergraduate school over 20 years ago. Well, actually 30, it's been 30 years. So um, 30 years ago, I was in undergraduate school, but all the way through, um, and even when I got my master's degree, this is why you can see that I have bookshelves full of books because all of those and more and in my office at work are all my binders and textbooks that I have kept for my whole career um, and college experience. Um, you don't have to save all of that, but you may need it someday. You might not think right now that you'll be taking another class or that you might need this, but you might change your mind later on. 10 years down the road, you might change your mind and say, I want to become a biology professor, or you might want to go into nursing, but you might have been in something completely different before, and then you wish that you had your textbooks back and your material. Although for you guys, you're in a different generation, and so everything is at your fingertips in terms of your electronics nowadays. But um, if you have it on hand, you may want it later on. Number nine, participate in surveys. Surveys will help you and your instructor with feedback. And I know for, for me, I really appreciate surveys because it helps me see what is working in the class. I treat every class completely different because it's always... Um, every student is unique. Every class is unique. And what works for one class, instructors, uh, we always pay close attention to our students and kind of see what's working or something might not work for another class. Some things work in one semester and they don't work as well the next. So this, your feedback helps us so we can constantly improve and change things in our classes. And we are open to constantly improving our classes to make them better for you and for future students. So anytime you can participate in that, that is very beneficial and helpful. Number 10, don't try or try not to miss important days. Presentation days where you need to give a final project presentation, an exam day, a quiz day, a day where you have a big lab that is not able to be made up, make sure that you try not to miss those days unless it's an emergency or you're sick. Um, don't schedule appointments on those days and find out the policy if there's a makeup for that. If not, like for me, I used to come in extra hours to do makeups and it got to be way too much, especially when teaching for classes, teaching online, having to write courses for my school. I was never getting any rest and my body suffered for that. So I learned to offer extra credit. I don't do exam makeups, but I do open book take home exams so that students have time to complete them. And then for my quizzes, I drop the lowest quiz grade or somebody can miss one quiz. Every now and then I might do something for extra credit and then I drop the two lowest or missed lab grades. And that just kind of clears everything up so that if you miss more than that, um, then that's on the student and they know that policy. Um, but they are given those extra chances to try to be successful. So always remember this quote, small efforts lead to big results. It's hard to see that sometimes when you are in it and when you're in your classes working, but always keep the big picture in mind. It's just a short period in your life. And in the end, you will come out um, finishing your class, finishing multiple classes, 
finishing a certification, maybe finishing and getting your degree. So always keep that big picture in mind. Your classes, each one of them, we are planting seeds and you're growing and you're gaining new knowledge and you're learning about yourself and about your life. And you are growing just like a plant, you're flourishing. And in the end, you will be a big oak tree and you will have accomplished so much. So always keep that big picture in mind and remember that you are an individual and that you matter.